and welcome to the Orchid Saga. My name is Ilkan Biesma. And today, as promised, I have a bit of a Q&A uh, video. So, uh, and I, uh, I do get my questions, of course, on, the, on occasion. And uh, I uh, also like to take some of them into a video because I do get the questions more often or I think it's very interesting for uh, quite a lot of people or something like that. So therefore, uh, I like to uh, make uh, a video with a few qu questions. Most of the times, the answer to the questions is not uh, long enough for one video. So I put them all together and we make uh, one video out of it. Uh, uh, and you saw it uh, probably already. I have my iPad ready because uh, that uh, makes it a bit easier for me to read the questions. I will have them in the screen, of course, so you can uh, read them uh, with me. So uh, that's said and done. Uh, just uh, thank you for being here and uh, let's start this Q&A. So here's the first question. So you guys, the first question comes from Mary G. Arkets, um, uh More. 2058, uh, great blooms video, love all the fails galore. Do you have species like Silveriana and Pumice 2? And do you check the pH and what is it? Can you tell us what you've learned in terms of growing in your setup? Please, uh, please, I'm sorry. Uh, like your bronze maiden one, and all, all yellow, yes. That one is done blooming. But so you asked about the Silveriana here next to me, she's also almost done blooming we have a few kind of okay looking uh, blooms but she's going over if she uh, is growing in self-watering and uh, what the ph uh, is well the ph um yeah i can do as well yeah le let's do both first of all is she growing in pumice too yes she is so let's uh, let's grab her I think that if it's possible because of the aerial roots, yeah, this one is not attached to the door yet. So here she is. And as you probably can see, we have uh, the first uh, blooms already going over. We are missing a few here, but yeah, that happens. She bloomed for quite, uh, quite a while, I guess. Shirayana, here is the tag. And I have this beautiful pink uh, variety, but we have some roots some area roots she's growing in a self-watering pot that's uh, hence why we have this water meter in here so let's grab her out take her out and i have this one 221 a21 so that's uh one and a half years something like that and here we go so those lighter roots are new roots the darker ones are old roots and some of them are, are rotted off are still rotting, rotting. <laughs> let me um, let me grab this quickly. A bit better, so I can turn it around. And we see here, for example, some markings on the roots, but it's still alive. So that's doing fine. That may probably be older roots. This one did break here, but it's still firm over here. So I leave those. I just leave them be. Uh, because I don't think they can do much harm as long as you don't have too much of uh, dead roots. We have a aerial roots that did uh, grow back inside of the outer pot. But yeah, overall, I hope you can see. Well, here is the most to see, I think. We have a darkened root, probably an old root, that started to shoot out. So yeah, and here, this part may be dead, but I just leave them in as long as I see so many new roots. I just leave them. I don't gonna mess around with them because I don't see the point. And um, then, then uh, yeah, I just leave them, uh, leave them, uh, leave them be. And of course, if you have your doubts, just keep on checking on them. So uh, let me grab the pH meter and we can see what uh, kind of pH we have inside of the pot because that was also a question of you. Okay, you guys, I'm back. I have my pH meter here and then my parts uh, per million. So I will uh, do both. I like to check both if I check. So here we go. Let's put it in and I will uh, turn this around. It's a little bit difficult <laughs> to this on, do this on camera. You see me stirring and this takes a little bit of a, uh, a little while, a bit of time to stabilize. 6.98 so around seven i should say if i took this in my notes i probably would put it down seven it's uh almost the same it doesn't uh, 
need to be uh, completely exact. But this is a nice pH. I keep it like this. I like to have a uh, pH between 6.5, 7, 7.5. And 8 is still okay. I leave them, but it's a little bit high. So around 7 is uh, perfect. And can you see the temperature? 23.3. So that's the temperature inside of the water in, in the reservoir. Uh, I need uh, to learn that as well. So if you have very warm days, that water can get quite warm. So uh, that's also something I keep an eye on. I always maybe hear it, <laughs> maybe you hear it in the background, but I have a fan running. I turn this one out for the filming, of course, but I always try to keep it kind of cool, especially on those uh, very bright, warm days. But this is uh, the pH at the moment. Let me uh, grab the parts per million meter as well to a complete uh, overview on what is happening here. This one goes very quick. And this is 110. Beautiful. Nothing wrong with that. So that is uh, beautiful. I hope uh, I did, uh, while well, I'm grabbing the arcade again, I uh, did uh, could uh, answer your questions. But yeah, she's doing fine and she's uh, obviously blooming. She's not that big yet, but uh, I think uh, she will get there if we keep uh, the pH right, etc. <laughs> okay, I'm putting the plant back and I will see you guys at the next question. Okay, you guys, time for the second question, which is coming from Wanda Schwa. I hope I pronounced it right. Probably not. Uh, let me see. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Beautiful, lovely stuff about the channel, etc. Uh, but the question is, uh, I also have a question. Is your pumice mix the same as palm? I use a Latusa palm. So you have the Latusa pots and I think uh, you probably have that as well. And those, uh, that company has her own uh, media for uh, the cell watering pots, if you don't know Latusa. Uh, but it's called the Latusa Pawn, so that's also a medium. Uh, I have it, uh, I bought it uh, three, three, four years ago, I'm not sure, because I had a cell watering pot, so it came with a pot. But I also found out that the pond uh, apparently has already some fertilizer in it. So yeah, it feels the same as pumice. I'm not 100% sure, but it, it, it feels the same. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same as the small pumice. Um, so that's probably right. But I don't use it because of the fertilizer, because I don't know what's in it. And I like to start clean, so I know what I, as a grower, put in my pots, what I give to my orchids. Because if they do very well or not so well, it doesn't matter that much. I still not know what, uh, what did they get, what, why they, do they respond to it as they do. And I, like to, I personally like to know if you don't care as much, um, obviously go for it. I think it's a, it's a fine media, but I, I'm not experienced with it, so I'm not sure. But I think that's the, the, well, the main difference. Maybe there's a little bit more difference to the both medias, but I know that it's, uh, at least back in the days, they had a fertilizer in it. So that's why I don't use it. I hope this uh, answers your question. Thank you so much for the question. Let's go to the next question. That's the third question. Or fourth, actually. No. Okay. So yeah, uh, the third question is actually, we had a few more, I, I think, because the first one had actually two in it. Well, fair enough, this one is also coming from uh, Mary G. Orchids and more. Uh, and I like, uh, I like the discussion. So that's why I put it in uh, again. It's just a good question. Actually, also, uh, also a few questions. Um, she comment, uh, great orchid bloom video. Thanks for sharing the tour. Uh, so many orchids in bloom. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> uh, what do you uh, think you owe it? To. Is it the grow light, fertilizer regime? Um, good question. Uh, I think it goes all hand in hand. So if, if one is off, a little bit off, you probably get away with it. But if it's too much off, so you have them, for example, too dark, but you have a wonderful fertilizer, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't do uh, the trick. It probably does the opposite. Because an orchid that is happy, that wants to grow, it has the light, it has the temperature, 
it has a, a, a bit of drop in temperature, even though it's not only for fails to let them bloom, but I found that in general speaking, most of my orchids do very well with a drop in temperature at night. So I'm speaking uh, of referring to a drop of a minimum of three uh, degrees. So I, I do degrees in Celsius. So, um, and I like to have it at around eight, 18 at night. And then during the day in the greenhouse, if it's a very bright day, we can, it can even go up to 30, 32 sometimes. But that drop in temperature is very wonderful. So it's not only for the blooming, that's I think a very important point. But if you have a orchid that is not happy with the light and you put fertilizer in it, you will get some point uh, if a uh, salt build up. Well, salt build up gives more problems than you basically already have. So an orchid is not happy, it wants to grow, but it, it cannot uh, photosynthesize, so it needs the light. It has the fertilizer, but it basically cannot use the fertilizer. So you're putting in more and more and more. So yeah, that's, that's not, that, and it may take a few months, even a year, but it will go down someday, uh, for sure. So yes, absolutely, it goes hand in hand. So a good fertilizer, good light, good temperature, fresh air. I currently have the door open of my greenhouse. I keep uh, fresh air coming in and um, yeah, don't, I have them in self-watering. So I, I, I need to think about the, the reservoir. Don't let them dry up. If you have a different system with moss or bark, etc., Yeah, you don't want them to have too dry for too long or too wet in that case. So uh, uh, yeah, those needs to, that needs to be balanced. And I think the most important one with fertilizer and you, uh, you have, you need a sort of schedule. I think the plants do ad adapt in, in, as far as they can, a sort of schedule. So if you water them every seven days, I would do it on the same day. I think that they get used to that schedule. And, and um, I think that's very important as well. I do differ uh, sometimes because it just happens, like work or something, uh, life com comes in the way, for, uh, for example. But I try to water uh, every Wednesday. Um, so that's, that's a tip as well. But yeah, you need a balance and then, um, then, then they will st start to get stronger and give more blooms. You need to have the stronger plants. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I'm not sure if you noticed, but my battery died in between. So I'm not completely sure, but I think I was uh, uh, at the fails, for example, if you buy a fail, that one has probably been through a lot. Uh, to get it to grow, to get it to bloom as quickly as possible. So those, for example, may take a while to adapt to your schedule, to your system. I suggest just give them the time. With orchids, in, in a lot of cases, you just need to have the patient. And I see mine now, the older ones really adapt and, and getting back in their normal rhythm of growth. But uh, some of them do take a year or some, sometimes even two years to get them really settled in and, and basically a cool down. Just a slow down, take your own a rhythm and, and start growing again. So I hope that does make sense. But if one is off, it will have its effect on the other one. And I have a greenhouse, uh, as you uh, probably know. <laughs> But um, I needed to um, have quite some shading on, otherwise it would be, first of all, way too warm and um, direct sunlight on, on orchids, you know, it's, it's not good. So I needed to find that balance and I think I found it. So uh, they do uh, wonderfully well. So that's probably why I, uh, I have no uh, complaints about not having uh, much in bloom these days. But I just did it, I didn't know what to expect and uh, so far uh, so good. Yes, absolutely, I'm very, very happy and uh, I really uh, enjoy the blooms. So good questions uh, again, thank you so much. Okay, next uh, question. This one is coming from Michael McCarthy. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Seems to have uh, quite some blooms. And an unrelated note, how is that climbing orchids uh, doing? Oncidium iris mist. Well, you even, uh, did you even remember it? Yes, I will uh, grab it. And it's uh, over here in the orchid room. That's why we are standing here. It is um, the aphids do love it, sadly. So it has quite some uh, remainings of aphids. We have a little spider there. So probably that will uh, eat the aphids, I hope. But this is it, can you believe it? 
I just took it off. I took the bulb off, and this is uh, how do I have it? It's yeah, Auto Odonto Glossum Iris Mist. I still have it. It's probably Onto Sidium Iris Mist. No, there is an Oncidium Iris Mist. I have that one as well. It's not the same, I know. But anyhow, this is when I bought it. It was called uh, Onto Glossum Iris Mist. So I keep it there for now uh, at this, that name. Anyhow, it was a very very climbing one. So what I did, I did uh, cut it off. Uh, it had a, a extreme long rise. I'm serious guys, something like this. So one bulb here and one bulb there. And the, in the middle was a rhizome. It was absolutely crazy. And Michael said, I never saw something like that before. Me neither. So, uh, but I took it out and now uh, it seems to behave a, a little bit better. But this plant, like I said, you can probably see it. Uh, the aphids do like it. So. And it did bloom, did bloom. So it is somewhere in my blooming update. And we have, whoops, new roots there. I hope you can see it there, the white parts. So it's doing uh, doing okay. But I believe that the bulbs on this one can be even bigger than this. This is not very huge. So it may, uh, I think it could do better. But anyhow, it's still okay. It's growing uh, fine. And I have it in my orchid room on the floor and it seems to do uh, do okay. It doesn't make those uh, very hideous, long, crazy long uh, rhizomes anymore, as you can see. And actually, it's still climbing because you can see here, there it is, it's new growth. It's a little bit bit climbing, but not nothing like it did. Um, was it one year or two years ago? I'm not, not sure anymore, but you remember it correctly. So this is the plant. I hope, uh, I hope this uh, answers everything. <laughs> okay. So we now are at the uh, other side of the orchid's uh, room. So yeah, I have a bit of difficulty with the lighting because those lights are very uh, strong. So I'm a little bit dark. My face is a little bit dark, but I hope it's still okay because this plant is living on the floor here. I did get on, it's a fairly older uh, video, so but it's nice that you still uh, look uh, looked, uh, up those videos and watch them. It's about the Primea sunlight. I did get a uh, few comments on that from Raoul Rindgender. I'm sorry. And you did uh, buy the, this uh, Primea sunlight not that long ago, if I am correct. And you were asking how I did uh, give it uh, get it uh, to thrive for me and what kind of conditions well it's actually not a very good growing orchid for me it's kind of okay let me uh, let me grab it uh, in meanwhile but it's not very happy uh, to be honest Raul. this is it and it was bigger and i had to uh, do a repot on it it's it's uh, making new uh can you see it yes new growths there. I had, I think about seven or eight spikes on it. It was, um, I think in winter during fall, I'm not completely sure. I, did, I don't think I did film them because I had it in a larger pot and this one likes to uh, grow the spikes torching over the pot. And I had it in a basket, so it didn't, it didn't reach the end of the pot and thereby uh, it rotted the blooms. Probably if it was a little bit stronger, I shouldn't have that problem, I think. I'm not completely sure, but yeah, I have it. Uh, it's growing for me, but it's not thriving uh, for sure. It could do better. So yeah, I'm not completely sure. I don't, I keep this on the floor because I, uh, if I'm correct, it doesn't like to be as warm as the rest. It doesn't need as much light. And I think that's, that's correct because I had it in a greenhouse about two years ago. And when I bought it and it was, the, the leaves were fairly dark, but it did lighten up quite, quite uh, much. So yeah, it, she didn't like it for sure. So I put it uh, back in the orchid room and it did start to do better again. It did at least start to grow again. But yeah, thriving, no, I'm not there. So maybe some viewers have a little bit more information about this one. It's still here. I have it for, well, you can see the repot dates. 20, 22 and 23, so not that long ago. So I tried again and I still have some roots on it, so it should do fine, but I hope yours is doing better. Anyhow, good questions. So uh, a good excuse to do an update on this one. <laughs> 
Okay, this is uh, the last uh, part, the last few questions of this video. And you probably guessed it, it's, uh, it's going to be uh, about Miltoniopsis, at least a, a few of them. And this is from, oh, I'm going to try my best. La Cure, I hope I pronounced your uh, name right. Probably don't do it, 75. Uh, beautiful and multiple yes. Yes. Well, okay. Others. Uh, thank you so much. Oh yeah, I have one question. When you grow your Miltoniopsis, self-watering, artificial light, etc. Yeah. Do you also have the impression they're not growing as tall as they are when you buy them? I feel like my new growth are not growing as high. Maybe it's because they they're too close to the light or lack of nutrients, etc. Good question, very good question. Uh, let me put my iPad somewhere. Okay, so first of all, the fragrance is so fantastic, you guys. I'm a little bit distracted. Anyhow, Miltoniops. Well, first of all, are, these are my favorites, and I know that you have a beautiful collection as uh, of Miltoniopsis as well. So that's uh, that's for sure. Good question. So what happens? You buy a, a Miltoniopsis from the store. It has these beautiful uh, bulbs. Then you repot it in, in our case, uh, into a self-watering setup. You grow it under artificial light and the bulbs are not as big as the previous one as you bought it. Uh, if I found that to be the case as well, I did give you an answer uh, uh, in the comments already. But let me uh, let me see if I have a good example. Uh, I'm not completely sure. Well, I can show it to you guys. <laughs> beautiful blooms, beautiful blooms. Okay, so this is the back end of the part uh, of the part, <laughs> the back end of the plant, plant, plant. Uh, all this bulb bit of newer bulb and I probably started to grow it from here I'm not sure I didn't I did get quite a few of uh, one bulb divisions but let's say this uh, uh, this this one may have grown in my care as well so this one does look better for sure this is the newest bulb as you can see it has a lot of leaves a beautiful color that grays Gray, a green grayish color, which we like to see on a Miltoniopsis, and multiple leaves. That is beautiful. It's not the biggest, but it's this is just one that doesn't grow as big. But so far, as you can see here, this bulb might be slightly, slightly smaller than this one. Could be, could be. So that's the first one. Um, let me check. I should have a very good example ready, but I didn't have it to me. So, yes, I think this you can see. I'm sorry, guys, but it's. I thought I had some examples, but I apparently didn't. Oh, let me see. I have another one in bloom. I couldn't fit on the table. Yeah, this is a one bulb division. You know what? I'm going to grab this one. I should prepare this better, but yeah, I was so distracted by the blooms. It's seriously, it's crazy, but I love them and fragrant. Anyhow, you already know that. Focus, focus. So here we have a bulb. Yes, I know the color and it's soft, but it's just an old one rotting off. This was a one bulb division, but it did grew another one in my care. And lo and behold, another one, which is making a new growth already but you can see this one is even a bit bigger than the previous one so that was the one first one that grew in a new setup in a self-watering setup and you can see that this one has a stronger stronger leaves more leaves and it's getting bigger so yes coming back to the questions i'm sorry but i needed to show this first so we know what we're talking about um, yes, uh, the first one is m in most cases the first new bulb I'm referring to that you grow in a new system is especially with Miltoniopsis most of the times uh, smaller than uh, the ones that you bought than the ones that it already had when you bought it I should say uh, and it may take a year or even 
two years to get them to full size again or even a little bit bigger than uh, the bulbs it came with. That is just how Miltoniopsis works apparently. So I do think it's you have, um, it's doable to grow them art uh, underneath artificial light, to get them bigger and stronger than they even were, but it takes time. And I, first of all, I think artificial uh, light works better than uh, daylight, or you need to have a beautiful shaded spot, but I tried different things, even morning sun, some get away with it, I didn't. I always have those burns on my uh, my uh, leaves so i start putting them in daylight they get a small amount on the end of the evening in summer if the sun has its, hits the glass over there it's over there and the miltonips are over there so yeah those basically do not get any daylight whatsoever very 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 mildly so yeah i'm i'm basically uh, growing them underneath the lights but i try to explain it uh, because it's very important because it's your question i don't think it's uh it, it can grow underneath the lights for sure but once again i'm going to mention it again because i thought i was very patient with my miltonia as well i wasn't until i really was so i did give them the time and it may sound silly, but it worked. As you can see, I have way more in bloom and they do better. I can uh, grow uh, better root systems on them and they just obviously uh, do look, start to look better and better, but they are still not there. I think this one, probably this one is going to be, be a bit stronger again. So yeah, it takes years sometimes for them to uh, fully recover and become very large plants. Plus, I do have the spider mites and I know that you have them as well sometimes because we did discuss it. If you have spider mites and you have a bit of an infestation or uh, you didn't notice them in time on a Miltoniopsis, you probably set it back quite a bit. So you may have grown it on for a year, but you sort of may have lost that year. Keep on growing them because they will come back and you now know what the problem is, but you need to have patience with Miltoniopsis. It's, it's the only way to grow them. Give yourself the time and, and give yourself the uh, room to learn. So don't, be, to, don't expect too much yet. You, there's always something that can go wrong and it happens, but the patient, you guys, absolutely patient. And of course, if something is off, figure out what it is, especially with the Miltoniopsis, because if you wait too long, you need to wait a few more years again. But when they succeed, when they start blooming, it's well worth it, trust me. And the fragrance is fantastic, so. So that's uh, the first question uh, that I did get from you. I did uh, get a sort of another question, uh, and that was uh, how I, let, let's, let's grab it, because otherwise I'm going to, do this wrong okay yeah well look at the size of those uh, miltonia flowers well thank you oh i'm out of screen thank you yes some of them are really getting bigger that's also uh, 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 something uh, then you know your uh, miltonia miltoniops is getting stronger and happier the blooms will on some of them will uh, get quite big so that's something to keep in mind as well uh, yeah I, I really don't know how to keep up with the orchid care besides working because uh, on, especially in these days, you hear me say uh, quite often, I think, uh, sort of apologizing, I don't have the time, I try to uh, comment to every comment, but sometimes it may take longer, etc. Yeah, I'm just putting that out there so you know that I'm not ignoring you guys because I really enjoy my uh, channel, I really enjoy making these videos, but yeah, it's work. And in sp spring, st uh, start of summer, uh, those are the very busy days for me. So that's, uh, it will take up about two to three months and then it should be getting a little bit easier again. So yeah, it does take time. How do I uh, uh, keep up with the work? Well, that's why uh, the biggest reason why I started to grow them in cell watering, because once they are adapted, the most important thing if you don't have much time is at least put some water in there so if i really really want to skip uh fertilizing and go uh, go very quick i can just put some ro, RO water in there and they are fine it's not very uh, beneficial for them 
but I will survive until I have more time. So that saves a heck of a lot of time because I, I, when I grew them in bark, I did soak my orchids. So I, I left them in water for about 30 minutes uh, to take them out, put the next one in, and that's how I could maintain them um, for seven days, keep them happy for seven days until I needed to water them again. But yeah, that takes up so much time. So that's why I, uh, I was completely falling in love <laughs> with the sem semi hydroponics when I learned it, when I started to know how it works. Yeah, I thought, well, that is the system that I need to uh, get into my uh, growing areas, into my plants, because if that works, it makes my life so much easier. And it does. So uh, watering is not the point, and on so far I didn't skip any fertilizing. I have the time for it, but the, the, the videos uh, do take up a little bit more time. So I skip on the videos because I obviously I, I have to uh, water my uh, plants. That's the most important thing. Um, so that's why I'm not filming on Wednesday for this, but I try to keep on filming for every Sunday because once again, I love this channel. And you guys help me out so much with subscribing, with a thumbs up, which is uh, means the world to me. So yeah, I will. Uh, if I skip one week, I will be back. And if you left a comment, I will get to it. And uh, eventually, it may take a few uh, few days or a week. Sometimes I'm sorry, but I I will get there. But that's how I keep up with with watering. It's doable. I'm really happy with the system. It helps me a heck of a lot, especially in these very busy days. So you guys, I think I talked quite a lot. I'm not sure. I have a little bit of a dry mouth, so I'm going to drink something. I probably uh, it's coffee time. Anyhow. Uh, thank you so much. I really enjoyed the questions. I will keep an eye on them, so I may not make uh, one of these types of videos very soon again, but uh, in the near future. So keep those questions coming. I will uh, give you the answer as soon as I can, and I may talk about it in a video as well. Let me know if you like these videos. Is this helpful? Have you, do you have tips? Did I uh, explain everything well? Please let me know if, it can, if I can do better. I would really like to know as well. So thank you for watching. I wish you a very wonderful day and I really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.